I see having a job. I see uh, having a job like you're getting paid to go to school, basically. Mm. So you're 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 in a position to learn their systems. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm. I feel like everybody's in a position in, in a great position um, as long as that boss or that manager understands that we're helping each other out like i'm not just helping you like this job got to serve me as well why um, right. that's that's just that's just how i see it like if if they don't see it that way well i have to position myself in a way to where you know what i'm here i'm here to study you hmm. see what i'm saying and i'm gonna apply i'm gonna apply the systems that i learned within this job to my own my own thing later hmm. And you, you you use the job, you leverage it to perhaps start your own thing or to advance within that structure. You 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 may be called to that job or, or right. to that to that company. You see what I'm saying? So um, but you may be called to lead in it because when you learn things in the trenches, you, you'll better understand how to be the CEO of that company as well. Mm. Hey, good morning, everybody. I want to thank you guys for, again, joining us here. It's your your favorite podcast, I hope. Uh, if not, you know what I'm saying, at least let's get a top five spot. You know what I'm saying? Top five or something, right? But it's the Lion and a Lambo with Lionel Mosby Jr., where we discuss biblical entrepreneurship, impact, and true success. And today, man, I got a brother on man somebody i actually met by getting into the room we've been talking about that on a couple podcasts before about getting into rooms and being able to rub shoulders with people and say man these are the people that you can build with and this is a brother that i've been building with over the last couple of weeks you know a couple of months um just seeing what he's doing on his side of the of the of the ocean of the pond uh, out there in georgia right and so kashif kennedy man Welcome on to the Lion and the Lambo podcast. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. I, I appreciate you having me on. Oh, man, we, we appreciate you coming through. And I just want to let you guys know, another podcast I need to add to y'all collection is Kashif Kennedy's Creative Are You podcast. We actually had a chance to sit down and talk and discuss. Um, That's a couple uh weeks ago. And it was just a great conversation. And just tell the people a little bit about uh your podcast and actually what you're seeking to do through it. Yeah, mainly uh, Creative RU podcast. It is to uh, speak to the individual that is pretty successful as far as, I guess, the the normal way of life to go. You know, like the main suggestions that, you know, your elders tell you, you know, go go to college, go do this. This individual does everything right. They, they get the career, they get the job, they make good money, but they're unfulfilled. They're still, mm -hmm. you know, in their prime but they're just unfulfilled and they don't know what it is exactly and and they discover that they're lacking uh the awareness of their creativity and actually like utilizing it now the thing is they're already utilizing it in some areas but they're just a little untapped as far mm -hmm. as uh how that is going as well as an individual who is create who is creative and is aware but they won't share it with the world Mm, that's awesome. I just thought the concept was so amazing when you introduced it to me. And, you know, as we had our conversation, just really understanding that, man, everybody is creative because everybody's unique and everybody is a creator from the creator himself. Exactly. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's right. So I, I thought that was dope when you when you really brought that out, man. And and just really expand my mind, right? You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, just dropping them gems from Genesis, you know what I mean? It was, <laughs> was, was super dope. I had to take some notes on that, you know what I mean? And so, so I hope you can come on and just share some of, uh, just some of that creativity with our community here today as we talk about the creative, creative side from the entrepreneurship, you know, standpoint here um, as well. Most definitely. Most so, definitely. Um, so as we just jump into it, man, I, I always like to find out, you know, for you just as an entrepreneur in your own right right what would you say is your biggest um is your biggest win to date my biggest win hmm i would honestly say just everything that i'm doing well you know let me back up i was about to say something else my biggest win uh i was about to say something else but i'm gonna i'm gonna say my my just being married man uh mm operating successfully in my household is obviously that's that's like the biggest 
thing for me. I want to have a successful household before anything else mm. is, is successful. Now, it doesn't mean that you stop what you're doing and do other stuff. Um, well, just focus on your household as far as like no job. No, that's not, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to put it in, in context. You, you do the things necessary to feed your household, whatever that might, and whatever that may involve as far as getting information, um, you know, just different counsel, whatever that is, make sure, um, I believe that it is important to do whatever you have to do to strengthen your household, make sure that your, your marriage is, uh, nurtured and make sure that your relationship with your children are um is is nurtured and you know so that everything else kind of grows from that you know mm. there are, are basic i believe entrepreneurship and social and just service principles that you learn from the house mm. you, know, you know what i'm saying so just learning how to clean a living room and cleaning your, your bedroom a kitchen um just you know setting guidelines and things like that you know no that that's such a true that's a great point you know it reminds me of this is verse in luke 16 verse 10 right where where god talks about you know he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful in that which which is much right and it's not that the home is least because when we break it all the way down the home is the foundation of everything Right. right. You know what I mean, the home is actually the great, the greatest yeah. thing. Right. But just from a mindset of sometimes how we think about it, right, or how we consider, right, we consider, you know, how we go about cleaning the living room as a small thing. But how we manage, like you say, that, right, will actually go into the effect of well, how we manage our business, how we manage, you know, right. uh, scaling up, right, and, you know, making more, more a month than we did last year, like all these different things, right connect and, and affect one another right and so right. i think that's highly important because many times many entrepreneurs forget about these things you know we're just thinking about the financial aspect of things but a true entrepreneur we talk about biblical entrepreneurship we want to be successful in all things <laughs> we don't want to just be successful in the business world but then we leave the family behind no that's that would be incorrect and out of order and out of balance right, right. you know so that's an awesome um, success to have because many people desire to have that success and while they have the financial success, they don't have the family success. So yeah, that's, and, that, and, and that's why, and that's why, um, and I, I, I totally agree. That's why people often say like success starts on the inside because before, before you have a successful household, you gotta be mm. successful with, with this house, with this body. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and now right now I'm I'm just saying it from a from a from a hierarchy standpoint. Now we we know that you know people have messy houses and they make a lot of money. We 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 know that. But I feel like people are missing steps and I, I feel like they should align themselves, mm. you know, with, with that. Um and I mean there are many other examples, but uh, if if anyone wanted to be successful through and through. Well, the root of it starts with the individual and then mm -hmm. they, they can start, you know, taking it to the household, taking it, you know, further out to the world and everything, you know, and then you, you have some solid principles to, to always operate by, to be informed by, basically. Mm, that's true. Right. So build, so you're basically talking about building your principles all the way up the ladder, right? Um, not seeking to run. You're trying to run quickly to success in 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 month with money right? right but now you don't know how to handle it don't know how to use it don't know how to properly uh deal with it because guess what you didn't you didn't live by principle every step along the way right so mm -hmm. i think that's a i think that's a great point man it's something that we all need to remember and keep in mind right mm -hmm. um so i just want to dive into and just you know kind of go back a little bit i always just like to hear and just understand the story of you know some of the entrepreneurs we we talk to um and one question i'm always interested to know um, because one thing that we want to do with the podcast is really help, you know, other entrepreneurs, other people who are looking to use their gift, talent, service, right. Um, to really impact the world. Um, just like I say that Jesus impacted the world, right. Um, when he came upon this earth, but there's a view of, uh, finances, there's a view of money, there's a view of business, right. To where these things are disconnected from, um, faith, right. Or, um, there could be a thought process that people have that, the more money you make, right, then, you know, the more uh, the more the, the less faith that you have, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or different things of that nature. 
And so I just want to get your understanding from you, right? When you were growing up um, in your family and in your church community, right? What was that view of money or finances, right? What was it then? Um, and how has it transformed over the years uh, to the place that you are now? Yeah, my my understanding, that, that's an awesome question. My understanding of it then was to work. <laughs> you work for it, you go to college, you get a good degree, and that will afford you the opportunity to get a good job. Um, obviously, I'm like, probably like my avatar in a way. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, you, you, you discover otherwise now, this does not mean that going to college is a, is a bad route. It's not mm -hmm. a bad route, but you still have to be present in a way. You have to operate certain principles as you're going through college to take advantage of the networks that you come across to leverage those networks mm. and, uh, and determine how you are to be of use in reference to your, your networks, how you can be of service and make it all come together as, a, as opposed to just working a job. Anybody can punch a punch a clock and take directives. You know what I'm saying? But entrepreneurship is way different. You got to be mm -hmm. connect. You got to be connect, connected with your mission, with the vision. You got to be connected with it. And you you have to basically be. You have your own dispatch system in a way to where you know where you're directed and that is your driver. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? But just punching a clock, going going to work. That's honorable. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's so much that you can pay attention to. I see having a job. I see uh, having a job like you're getting paid to go to school, basically. Mm. So you're 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 in a position to learn their systems. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm. I feel like everybody's in a position in, in a great position. Um, as long as that boss or that manager understands that we're helping each other out. Like, I'm not just helping you. Like, this job got to serve me as well. Why? Um, right. That's that's just that's just how I see it. Like, if if they don't see it that way, well, I have to position myself in a way to where, you know what? I'm here. I'm here to study. You hmm. see what I'm saying? And I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna apply the systems that I learned within this job to my own my own thing later. Hmm. And you, you you use the job, you leverage it to perhaps start your own thing or to advance within that structure. You 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 may be called to that job or, or right. to that to that company. You see what I'm saying? So um, but you may be called to lead in it because when you learn things in the trenches, you, you'll better understand how to be the CEO of that company as well. Mm. That's a good point. Like every job is is a school yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I love that that's a great concept to have and it gives us a different mindset so that people you know because there's a lot of discontent you know across right. the board and this right. is not even for people who say well i want to be a business owner for example right it's mm -hmm. just people who are just discontent and they don't necessarily desire to be a business owner they just don't like the job that they're working at, right. right but then it's it really deals with the expectations that we have me and my wife are actually listening to a sermon yesterday just really talked about expectations and mm -hmm. how you know some 62 5 says our expectation comes from the lord right um and when we have the understanding that all things that we desire is actually coming from the lord even though it's even even though he may give it through an individual the expectation is not met just by the individual but through the lord working through the individual right and that but that in and of itself changes so much of how we didn't deal with the individual right and right. so that then that makes me think about your statement when you say you know what um we have to come and look at work as if it's a school it's a training ground like i'm here to not just to give of myself but i'm here to receive i'm receiving information on how to structure a system i'm receiving information on how to deal and deal in process reports or how to really put together good customer service or to see you know like if i'm right. looking at it from that perspective and learning so much and taking this oh man it changes your thought process of how you go to work every day then yeah. right you yeah. know what i mean yeah, and, and, and the the, no. the last the last I, I know I cut you off. No, no, the, go ahead. The the last um like in terms of the company that I was working for, I was working for AT and T. This was some years back. Like there were so many things I loved about that job. Of course, mm -hmm. there were some things I I didn't like, but um the, really the only reason I stopped doing it was because it was cutting in it was cutting in the family time <laughs> like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, but but what I loved about that job is that. I could go because I was installing internet. That's you know internet and cable. Once I got the job, once I got to work and I, I um you know hit the hit the job and went to the uh, customer's house, I was there. It was me. 
You know, mm -hmm. I, I could uh, obviously there were metrics involved, but there there wasn't any anyone overshadowing me. Of, of course, a manager could stop by to check on you. That would happen. But other than that, you you was it was you. You were being held accountable. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, met, the metrics was going to speak for them for itself as far as whether or not you did the job and everything. But um, as an example, with that particular job, I was given the opportunity to exercise my entrepreneurial muscle mm -hmm. because I didn't have anyone over my shoulder 24 mm -hmm. seven checking on me. So that job served me. And, and now I can do uh, graphics, music for clients and I can get the job done mm -hmm. without, without having to have somebody, you know, cr uh, crack the whip on me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then how would you explain entrepreneurship then, right? Because um, you're, you're saying that in this job, though, yes, it's a job. I had to punch the clock, right? I had certain structures set up for me. But yet in it, I saw pockets of opportunity for me to use an entrepreneurial muscle that right. actually is now serving me as I'm doing things on my own now. So yeah. what what are kind of the traits of, somebody being entrepreneurial in a job setting um here, here's here's what i feel there there will be, there will be opportunities where you have to take initiative there initiative. will be okay. yeah there will be opportunities where you're not going to be able to call on your manager you know mm. so if if i um ran into it if i got a job where it, uh maybe i had to get up on a ladder or maybe i had to do something where i would normally have to get permission <laughs> um well my manager would say listen if you can't get in contact with me i'm gonna need for you to make a decision but e even if my manager didn't say that i have to be of the mind because she'd make a decision because the job got the job has to get done mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? um and that's that's in general of course there are some situations where it's like you know what i need my manager's uh, permission before i can go forward mm -hmm. um very very few examples of that but other other than that you make a decision mm. so being an entrepreneur it really requires you to make a decision and that challenged me because i can be somebody i have to get all the facts first i have to get all the <laughs> i got to get all the information first and sometimes that'll delay me from making a decision mm. well good entrepreneurs make decisions quickly you know, and now sometimes that can work against somebody that makes decisions quickly about everything and they're not, they don't have enough information, mm. but it can also be a very good uh, quality as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, because it has to move. The business has to move. You mm. know? Yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. I love how you broke that down because, you know, in simple terms, I feel like now I can say that what makes somebody an entrepreneur is their decision maker. And decision maker yeah. doesn't mean from the think thought process of top level decision maker. It just right. simply means you're a decision maker. Meaning, even in your job that you're doing in this particular position, when you have to take any initiative, when you have right. to use brain power, right, to actually execute something, when you have to make a choice or decision, you are now exercising entrepreneurship in yeah. whatever field or a situation you're at. And so, even when I think now about you know from the job to say the classroom with kids or youngsters, when we give them opportunity to think and use their mind, their mm -hmm. mindset, right? They have to think mentally or That's right. to make a decision or choice or to take initiative. What we're doing is helping them to be better entrepreneurs, which right. at the end of the day, being better entrepreneurs really helps everything in the community. Cause that means we're helping people to exercise in a, a muscle of initiative, right? right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And instead of everybody looking around like, well, who's going to do what? It's like, no, 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 no. Take initiative, right? right? You know what I'm saying? We all need to be the one in our own spaces that that jump out. And I want to ask you, too, because this also leads me to to want to ask you the question about entrepreneurship and, and entrepreneurs. Do you feel that they are creative? You know, because I know you have the Creative Are You podcast. Right. And so... Do you see creativity in entrepreneurship or do you see that entrepreneurs are creative then? Yeah, it to me, man, it goes hand in hand. It it goes mm -hmm. hand in hand. Like even and I've, I've heard of, you know, individuals saying, well, you know, I'm not that creative and I'm listening and I'm talking. I'm just like, you're like, you're speaking a broken language right now to me because 
everything that you're doing requires a creative process. Mm. Um, now, of course, the ins and outs uh, or or the, the nature of the job might be more financially driven or it might be more logistically driven. And, you know, we, we spoke about this uh, before. Um, the the framework that has to be created require creativity in itself. OK, when, when it comes to allocating finances and mm. funds, you know, that requires creativity. Um, it is a resource that, you know, when you generate income, you want to know how to keep them. You want to know how to keep the money. Right, right. You have to be creative in how to make that happen. Anybody knows how to spend money. Anybody knows how to, like I said, punch the clock, go to work, get paid. Anybody knows how to do that. But when it comes to budgeting, right, allocating funds in the best way for your household or for your business, it requires creativity. Um, mm -hmm. when, when you're consulting someone, uh, on their finances, it's going to be different for every client. Mm -hmm. And even though there are, there's a framework in place, you can look at what their, where their finances are and you can see, you know what, this program works best for this client. This program works best for this client. And you'll know how to better tailor fit this, uh, this framework for that particular client mm -hmm. versus another one. That that requires creativity. At least mm. that's that's how I see it. It's it's not right. just painting pictures, you know. Right. But um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's that's really how I see it. And but there are some uh entrepreneurs who see it as being creative, but there there are some there are many that totally separate they they separate that concept mm. from you know, from what creativity is, which I, mm. I think is hilarious. <laughs> gotcha. No, I understand. That makes that makes perfect sense. Right. It is, it, and even in the sense of painting, it's like, well, you know, you can mix certain colors together and and, and get a different shade of blue or you can paint the same two people can paint the same exact picture. And yet the colors they use are different and how it comes out different because they use different colors. Certain elements of the picture comes out different. Right. Because, right. you know, so. You know, that's the same thing you talk about in the business world of the processes that you put together or, you know, how you highlight this issue or how you take care of this problem. You, you know, it's, it's so interesting because that really is a creative process in, in its own right, you know, too right. as well. So right, that, makes, that makes perfect sense. You know what I mean? So yeah. so I, I want to just uh, know, you know, uh, after you just kind of growing up, you know, when did you first get into entrepreneurship right i know you spoke about you know working at at&t right um right. what led you to actually dip your foot and your toe into now taking initiative not just in your job right but now taking initiative right of your own fruition your own self to actually then say okay i want to start this business or you know i want to show try to do this thing on my own when was that first time that you kind of jumped into entrepreneurship it, it's funny because I, I feel like entrepreneurship pursued me <laughs> before before I, <laughs> before I ever got a job. And mm. the one one reason why is because I I knew how to draw and play music as a like early as a child. Like I, mm. I realized it at maybe four or five that you know maybe it was something that I really liked to do. So there were always family members tugging at me. Hey, can you draw this for me? Can you draw that for me? Can you you know um, now art art maybe came first in terms of me realizing that maybe I had a inclination toward that and okay. music music was more so, more so around when I was about five or six mm. um, that I had the ability to hear something and 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 duplicate that on an instrument some kind of way um, and figure it out just like know. by by ear right 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 wow, by, cool. by ear yeah okay. I, I, um, and primarily on piano that was the first instrument that I really touched if I could hear it and obviously it started out with melody and then i was able to figure out harmonies and everything mm -hmm. and, and just hearing it back as i'm hitting the key and it sounds like this i was able to bring that together All right so but yeah family members would always reach out to me and and ask if i could do something for them okay. <laughs> so 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 that that was you know of course at first it would be just a favor but you know people started to pay me mm -hmm. and and while um, now I didn't go full fledged with it, but it was something that I could use as a reference point. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, my grandmother um, was a hairdresser. OK, so so she she was the, she was the prime hairdresser on the block. So I was I was I was present when uh, 
when she got her her salon built, it was attached to her house. Oh, that's and, cool. Yeah, at the time, I didn't know that it was called entrepreneurship, but I've never seen her go to a conventional job. I've never seen mm -hmm. her do that. I've, I've, I've only known her to mm. build, build, build that shop on the back of her house. And I would just see people come to her mm. <laughs> and she would just do their hair. And she, you know, she was the person to go to. So I was able to see it in action at an extremely young age, like really as, as early as I can remember. Mm. Um, yeah, just her serving those clients, you know? Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. Wow. That's a that's a great example. You know, when you see and I feel like that's something that I also see a lot of people. You have to see something. Right. That's you right. have to, like, come into contact with it. Um, and the same thing with me. You know, my grandfather was a dentist, had his own dentist shop. He was a you know, black dentist in the area. Then my mother ended up graduating and come back, taking over the shop. She worked with him until he passed. And now she's running the shop. My aunts yeah. all when it's the, two of them went into the medical field, you know, like one of them went and was a lawyer, right? They got their own law. So I mean, I saw all around me like people who owned their own business. So it was like yeah. when I was so young, I just remember writing out ideas for different businesses, but it's because everybody around me had businesses, right? That was like the thing, you know. It was never a thought process of okay work would be my last thing that i ever would do in life like no yeah. i want to eventually do something on my own because i mean everybody in my family does it so that's right it's a good point right you know seeing seeing that it's your grandmother right um was able to build right this shop attached to her house that sounds lovely don't even got to go nowhere people coming to her okay mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and and, and the, the the interesting thing was that that's what she did. And she never she never told me. Now, don't get me wrong. She was proud of me for going to college, getting a degree. Mm -hmm. um, but she she never she didn't really push me to go to college like that. She was proud of me for making that decision. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is like, you know, go go get that paper. Mm -hmm. you know, go. <laughs> but she never. Now, she mm -hmm. came she came to my graduation. She you know, she helped me like she even co-signed for the uh, a apartment that I was leasing. She was my okay. co-sign. You know what I'm saying? So so she supported me, but she wasn't the one. Now, you know, of course, she encouraged it if it, if it was what I wanted to do, but she didn't push me to right. do it like that because mm. what I really got from her is that, like, you already got something. Mm. Like, you got something right now that if you didn't go to college, you would still be able to use that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I really, and, and she didn't really have that conversation with me but she wasn't going to force me to go one way or another. So, you know, I, I found that to be um, powerful w without her really mentioning it. And mm. then, so she was like that example and, and, and to bring it on, uh, to bring up Christ, Christ was just, or is the ultimate example of having a mission, mm. you know, getting it done. He even, right. used, he even used parables, which we would call an analogy or or principles right to teach so and i believe one reason that he would use parables is so that you can connect with uh huge concepts on a elementary level right right you know what i'm saying so it's just um i'm, I'm thankful for, for that demonstration and for his example because i can see what he does Mm. And I can follow that. You see what I'm saying? It's mm. not it's not just something. Um, it's not a deity that I can look up to and just worship. Mm. Well, he actually demonstrated something right. and, and then went on to say, you're, you're going to do greater things. You're mm. you're going to do what I do and do greater things. Right. So that that's something I can connect with mm. Ver versus just, you know, something to worship or someone to worship. That's see? awesome. No, it's awesome, man. I mean, that's why I love biblical yeah. entrepreneurship, because it's like you really see from the scriptures that there are so many examples. And Christ, of course, is the greatest example. You right. know, like you said, he went forth and he modeled something that he then turned around and say, hey, I'm modeling this so that you can also follow in the steps. Right. You right. know what I mean? And like you say, you you don't do greater things even than these. And then that is the same thing we see when we look out in now the natural, though, like how you talked about your grandmother who had a business right who set up a shop right that's something that people could see right this example that she led out in that people could then turn around and say okay i want to follow that example on mm -hmm. my own right as i grow and so it's the same concept right you know through different people 
You yeah. know, so so when you when you start building up, right, you saw that you had this gift or talent, especially in the forms of, of drawing, right, earlier on. Now, when did you start to see and also understand from a music standpoint that you also had uh, that a skill and ability and that this is something that you could actually monetize as well? Um, you know, that's somewhat of a tricky question because I, I saw it. I saw it very early, but at the same time, when people would tell me the, the conventional way to go, which I, I which I wasn't mad at, mm-hmm. I kind of got I kind of got that a little confused a little bit. So I think when it really became clear to me was when I was in college. Mm. Um, and what do you I, mean by conventional way? Because you said they told you yeah, conventional way to go. When, 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 I, when I say conventional way, I mean going through school, going okay, to college, okay. gotcha, getting, gotcha. Yeah, getting a degree. Um, and I, and I, I appreciate that because we, we do have to qualify that so that so that we know what, what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's the conventional way is as far as how I understand it. Again, not mad at that. That works for a lot of people. And like mm-hmm. I said, I did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not, right. I'm, not, I'm not speaking from a standpoint of just, you know, y'all, y'all trying to brainwash. No, I, I did it. I, I got my degree. So um, and I'm I'm thankful that I did it. But uh I was hoping that I could monetize it when I was younger, mm-hmm. you know, and I didn't have a lot of examples around me. Uh, where people were making a lucrative income from it, like personally, like, of course, we see famous people. Right. right. I, I didn't know them personally. And mm-hmm. plus, uh, I went to a performing arts. I went to a performing arts school. So mm-hmm. I saw a lot of musicians, you know, they would um, some of them went off to Juilliard. They they did very well. OK, mm-hmm. um, we, that, that's an awesome school. So they they will move on to do music work for plays you know mm-hmm. or, or to do art work for plays and, and things like that um so i saw that so mm-hmm. it seemed a little more lofty than i would like for it to have been you see what i'm saying like right right like it, it's a little up there even though that should be my standard anyway and i should go for that anyway but it just seemed so easy that if i wanted to get a job and i'm, I'm being i'm using that example but if I wanted to get a job at McDonald's, I could just go get a job at McDonald's versus mm-hmm. if I want to be a musician, it's not just going to be a musician. You got to prepare. Right. You got to You got to put that work in. Mm. And before you can even be accepted in the music world, you got to be able to play a recognizable uh, melody. <laughs> and if you're not doing that, <laughs> you will be ridiculed. People right. Right. Talk about you. Right. So that that was a little bit of the fear. But, you know, hey, you know, so when I when I got in college, I was like, OK, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm studying mm-hmm. and I wasn't studying music in college. I was actually I entered as an architecture major mm-hmm. and because I, I, I love the art in buildings. So I, I figured, OK, that will probably be lucrative. So that's that was why. I went for that particular profession and okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's why I went for that, for that particular profession. So yeah, as, as that time went on, I was not feeling fulfilled in that area. I mean, it was a very strange thing because, um, you know, I, I was told, you know, I, I can make a decent living and everything, but my, my passion or some something wasn't connecting with that walk okay so i had to definitely address that during that time so someone had a garage sale and they were selling a guitar and i purchased the guitar actually my mom purchased the guitar for me it was 90 dollars, and that was the first step to me learning guitar and getting better at it and um People started to recognize me for that. And and up to this point, you you were basically only good with the piano, basically, right? That was your I, main instrument. That that was my main instrument. But since since I had uh, primarily focused on art throughout high school, I, I didn't share that detail. I wasn't as polished. I, I still had my my head knowledge of it, 
but I wasn't as polished to to for it to be my main instrument. You know what mm. I'm saying? So what what ended up happening is after I got the guitar when I was in college, I, I used the piano to teach myself how to play guitar. I I used my knowledge of it to just sit down to sit down with it and um, experiment with it. And I was able to, you know, just find my way around the guitar easier mm. than um, and I, I found out I, I liked it because it was like, I'm going to compare what I like most. You know, I'm, I'm going to I guess the deal that I made with myself is I'm going to get better at guitar at piano or I'm going to I'm just going to learn another instrument because at that point I had kind of put it down. Mm. So either I was going to go back into it and and really give it a lot more than I gave it before. Or just you know incorporate new instruments and go and go from there. So in my walk in my journey of doing that, I really enjoyed how the guitar felt, and mm. so I still play piano. It's just I do it for music production reasons, um, and guitar just feels good in my arms. So mm. that's why that's why I decided to, to just pursue it further. And so, how many instruments can you play like now currently? Um, all in all, I, I played trumpet uh, once upon a time, but I, I put okay. that I put that down. Um, but <laughs> but currently, currently, I'll say in a functional working way, I I could play three instruments. I now okay. any, anything I put my hands on, you give me enough time with it, I'm gonna know what to do with it. But as far gotcha. as what I what I use today, like on a regular basis, mm. um, that's keyboard, obviously guitar, bass guitar. Um, I, I could, I could play a few drum licks, you know, but it's, it's not, <laughs> I can't reclaim it, you know, but, um, but I, I, I could play something and record it and it would be official for sure. Mm, okay. <laughs> that's, all, that's awesome. So, and, and that's something that you started this process. It's lovely to see, not only did your grandma support you early on, but you also now see how your mom comes into the picture. And I know she was probably supporting you all the way through, right? But just you made the mention of her in this pursuit, right? Mm -hmm. That ended up in your entrepreneurship journey, how she bought that guitar, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you started learning and uh, and playing it. So mm -hmm. now you, you've learned the guitar, right? You, you knew the piano. You know, now what is the what is that first situation where you're brought to that position and you say, okay, this individual is somebody that, you know, I should probably charge them for this thing that I'm doing for them. Like, what right. was that first situation, that first moment? Um, tell us about that. Yeah, the, fir the first situation is, is funny because I'm, I'm doing some of the same stuff now, but the first situation was um, was a church. I, I started, I, I approached the, uh, I think it was the music, it was either the musical director or the choir director of the church where I was in college in, in Tallahassee, Florida. And at the time, I I was still reluctant. You know, I was, uh, as far as me being in front of people and playing the guitar, I was just like, I really felt that God put it on my heart, but I, I, felt, <laughs> I, I feel like God was like, was, was sort of priming me and, uh -huh. and preparing me you know, I feel like the spirit of God was like, listen, you're you you can get better in your room if you want to, but I'm I'm gonna need you to be in front of some people. Mm -hmm. Like I, I felt strongly like that he was telling me to get in front of this church and play. Mm -hmm. You know, and at that point, I was volunteering. Um, but they they were they were like, Yeah, yeah, come on, like, you know, yeah, come play. And I was like, I'm not all that great. And they was like, yeah, just, just come anyway. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> and so yeah, I, I came, I had this little tiny guitar amp <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and here I am this, this, uh, 21 year old, you know what I'm saying? New at this instrument. I was probably mm. about, about a year in and, and, and could barely play a couple of chords to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, I could play a few, but um, I, I was known as the guitar player of that church. Mm. And then eventually, wow. eventually, you know, I, I started to pick up on, you know, since I knew how to play piano, who am I paying attention to? I'm playing, I'm paying attention to the piano player and what he's playing. And then I start dissecting these songs and I start, mm. you know, because I already, as a five, six year old, one of my 
one of the first things that I did when I sat at a piano was learning how to play a song. So I was taking the same thing that I did at six mm. and I'm applying it to learning these, these gospel songs. Gotcha. And yeah. And that's, it, it just grew. I, I was still, I was stumbling. I felt embarrassed. I felt, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I continued to show up and yeah. Yeah. Pe- people would be looking at me like, yeah, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> In, inside, you're feeling like, man, like, what are they talking about? And they're just like, this is awesome. This is the, this is the best guitar player we've had in right. a long time. It always seems like that happens that way, right? You know, while yeah. we're, I get, we're our biggest critic, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? So while we're sitting here dissecting ourselves, other people, they don't see. I, I say that as a videographer all the time, you know. I'm so tech. For a long time, I didn't shoot stuff for myself. And it's just right. because, well, I'm my client, right? You know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to be in front of the camera and also behind at the same time. So I'm being extra technical, but right. it's really because I'm caring about stuff that the people watching, they, they never would care about. They, they yeah. never, they don't even see it. They don't even recognize it. It don't even make sense to them. Everything looks great to them, right? Um, where it may not look great to me. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, I think that's always so interesting. And we have to learn how to kind of, get over that hump um is that something that you've experienced um continually in your uh in your walk as an entrepreneur and you know how have you dealt with that or kind of brought yourself to get over kind of not being a perfectionist um and and you know not 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 putting your best foot forward right but also not waiting until everything is perfectly aligned before you jump out there and do something yeah, that that was one of the biggest things that I learned. Um, and this, like, mind you, this, this is my walk with with God. Like, I I would just get this thought, like, don't don't just sit up in your room practicing only. I mean, do that, but go out, go out somewhere. You know, you know, not. I mean, for me, my instruction was not standing on the corner with a hat. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying that that wasn't my instruction. That wasn't mm-hmm. the thought that I got. But it was to go to this church. You mm-hmm. know. And uh, eventually this church started, you know, paying me a little something. It wasn't much, mm-hmm. but they, I mean, it would be $50, you know, it, it would be based on what, whatever they could do for that week. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it was, it was helping out with bills. Of, of course, I made sure that I um, contributed and, and did things like that. But um, that's when I first started getting that feeling that, you know, man, Lord, you know, my mom spent $90 on this guitar and here I am, I'm getting this <laughs> on average about $90 a week. Right. So, right. so I'm noticing the return, mm-hmm. you know, from a, a, a guitar that we spent $90 for. Mm. And mind you, I sold that same guitar years later and that guitar had appreciated so much. So, so, <laughs> investment like i noticed investment you know what i'm saying we only paid 90 for it or my mom paid 90 for it hmm. and I, I sold it for like 500 maybe um what yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you yeah, sold yeah. the guitar for now was the car the guitar worth 90 when she bought it for 90 or was it actually it, worth more it, it was she got a deal on it i'm sure i'm sure it was worth more that that person was just was just trying to move some items you wow yeah yeah I, I sold it for like 500 um because it it was actually like a vintage style mm. guitar i didn't know that when i got it I well, didn't you didn't know, know you got it. you just you just, <laughs> you just started guitar you wanted to play the guitar yeah, yeah. your mom was like you know that's that's jesus you know right. just working everything out yeah. so you bought the guitar for 90 you made money every week maybe an uh, average of 90 dollars a week right for a period of time Right. And you sold the guitar for five. I mean, talk about triple winning, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's that that's that's how I noticed it. Of course, over time I had to figure out other ways to well, maybe more can come out of this um this entrepreneur this entrepreneurship journey. And again, at the time I wasn't really calling it entrepreneurship, I just saw the the return coming back from it. Mm. And um, and then I ended up seeing uh this one gentleman who was making music and he was getting uh, licensing and and sync, like music licensing, like for for TV music. So Mm -hmm. that opened the door more for, I'm like, you know what? Now I'm starting to see, Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see all the different ways that I can make money through music only, not just art. You see what I'm saying? So that's what helped me to stick with it. And that's what helped me to see that 
I don't have to be a famous musician. I don't have to be this worldwide, you know, I don't have to be that. Right, right. I, I can right. still provide a service and I can I can make a good living, you know. And I'm mm. I'm I'm still on that journey, but I I was able to see that and I, I was happy seeing that. And and I saw that in my apartment room, <laughs> uh just in prayer. And I'm like, Lord, I need you to show me how I can make money doing this because I don't have a mentor. Mm. No one's showing me how to do this. So he he just opened my eyes to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think that's amazing. You know, yeah. we have many people that have come on the show and, you know, we, we, as we say, this is biblical entrepreneurship and we talk about taking God as your counselor, you know, right. making God your business partner. Yeah. And, you know, so many times you hear that the same thing of people talking to God about what it is that he would have them to do or how they're going to do this or how they're going to take care of this. And God always answers, you know, and so we have to, you know, for anybody out there that's listening you know, we have to remember this is an encouragement, right? Take right. it to Jesus. Take it, lay it before his feet. Talk to him about it, right? Discuss your your fears, your your sorrows, your joys, right? Everything and make a plan with him. Make that plan. Lay it before his feet. That's what Psalms 37 says, because God is going to be able to bring that thing in the past, right? And if he needs to redirect you, right, in a different direction because he has something greater for you than what you think, then he's going to take you in that direction but you can't do that if you're not asking him it's just like i if i don't ask kashif about okay these chords how how am i ever going to know right i don't know nothing about piano I'm, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just peck, I'm just pecking away here right you know what i'm saying but so if i want to know i need to ask somebody who has an idea about it right and we all are connected with somebody who has an idea about it and he loves us he desires the best for us right so we gotta we gotta go connect with him now i want to ask you too because a lot of, you know, when we talk about even entrepreneurship, you know, one one phrase is, you know, they talked about the starving artist. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that phrase is something that really comes from the artistic world. You know, it comes from those who are specifically you talking about people who are in the musicians or the music field. Right. That right. genre. Right. And so that has been something that's kind of been there and kind of hovered over uh, uh that genre of uh are of people uh, of business right. owners right entrepreneurs right. um that sometimes latches on to other areas of entrepreneurship even in different fields but it comes originally from the artist world right the starving artists mm -hmm. you know why why is it do you think that many people are uh, artists um aren't able to figure out how to monetize right such a beautiful gift that they've been given especially i mean in the 21st century when you can't do anything or go anywhere and music is not involved you can't make a yeah. youtube video without music you can't walk into a store without music you can't go get coffee without music you can't drive in a car without music you, literally music and musicians are if at any time they were needed would be now right but right. yet you still have this uh and and maybe the and maybe the thought process is just off, right? Maybe there's no such thing as a, star, a, a starving artist anymore, right? But why do you think that persona is there that would that you would have family members that say, "Oh, you want to be a musician? No, 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 don't do that. Go get this degree," right? You know what I'm saying? Why is that persona there? And also, why are there musicians who haven't figured out how to monetize a skill in a time frame when music is everywhere? Num number one, and that that's that's awesome. Like. I, I think people need to hear what, what I'm about to say. And I'm not saying I have the perfect answer, but I, mm -hmm. I can only tell you what 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 I went through. Mm -hmm. Number one, I definitely went through that struggle of reconciling with, I'm like, okay, Lord, these people are telling me this and I want to do this music and art. I want to do it, but that's not what people are telling me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that, there was a struggle there, you know, like I want to make my family proud but I know what you have called me to do. So, so we put that pen right down. I ain't, ain't got to really explain that too much. Mm -hmm. um, I do think there's a lack of respect for the art from a standpoint of paying for it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do, I do think that people uh, enjoy music through and through on the radio. As long as I can get it for free, I love it. <laughs> you know, because radios use it as a promotional tool. Mm -hmm. um, they they run commercials in between. Um, but I mean, that's what radio is, you know. So at large, music is being provided free in terms of the, the listening experience. Mm -hmm. um, they throw commercials in because they have to pay bills for the radio station. But in order to have ad free radio, 
you got to pay for it. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's that that's that's one way that it comes to that artist. Then you got to get plugged in with an organization that is uh, funneling the funds through people who may subscribe some kind of way. Like you got to get plugged into it. And sometimes individuals that are uh, involved in the like the higher ups that are involved in uh, formulating that framework may not always be as forthcoming with the information telling musicians, hey, this is how you mm. can can get connected with this platform because of maybe one reason. The music has to be good. <laughs> mm -hmm. and if it's not good, people don't want to be associated with a, with a, a musician or even an artist that does not do good do good work, but they're they're passionate about doing it. But here's the interesting thing: good is relative. Facts is yeah. is relative to the person that is observing, looking, viewing it. So mm -hmm. that is a little subjective and it, it, it's tricky. But those are variables. It has to be good. And then for the organization to want to co-sign and, and um, endorse what you're doing, then you got to know to even reach out to them. And so they're 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 in place. They're there now. You got millions of musicians reaching out, which makes it hard. Hmm. But interesting thing: last year when the pandemic started, people started to really show their appreciation for media. You hmm. know people really started to gravitate toward podcasts. People really started to gravitate toward movies and like mm -hmm. in, in a different way than before, you know, right. they really wanted to invest in it. Like, you know, whether it was a subscription, $10 a month or $50 a month in lessons, guitar lessons, instrument lessons, music production lessons. Um, people took an appreciation. They, they took uh, a level of appreciation with it and wanted to invest it. Whereas before, when when it was when it was provided free in public schools, like say in band or something like that, mm -hmm. it it held a certain position. When they started taking it out of schools, it's like, whoa, I gotta figure out how to get my child mm -hmm. involved. So, you know, all those different things play play a, a role, you know what I'm saying? So I have to make sure that I'm in place to 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 provide lessons in some fashion i'm getting away from one-on-one -on -one lessons i'm more so doing like uh i'm, I'm in the process <clears throat> excuse me of uh, doing a course uh oh that's yeah, awesome yeah re record some videos for a course for guitar and music production because i want to make sure that i do my part in having that available to individuals that want to learn virtually mm, that's awesome and what what kind of platform do you use to do like a virtual lesson right because one thing mm -hmm. that I, it makes me think about was like you know, even when I record sometimes, if I'm recording live, I can see kind of a short delay, for example, right? right. So, like, is there a certain platform that you use in order to be able to stay um, connected like that? Yeah, um, one one platform that, that I used was uh, Taylor Robinson Music. They, mm -hmm. they basically have a bunch of, you know, interested, you know, beginners, uh, intermediate and, and advanced uh, learners of each of any instrument really, excuse me. Um, and then they reach out to musicians or they reach out to teachers that are signed up to that platform and they mm. basically connect it to. So I, I've done that like on a very small level for, for years. Like they'll just hit me up if the influx comes and you know I'll say yes or no and then I'll do that. Um, the, mm. most, the most recent platform that I've worked with is Out School. Out and, School, okay. Yeah, 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 Out School. So. I've, I've been able to teach a couple of students who were like overseas um, and definitely wow. students throughout the, the U.S. The the tricky part is the time zones. Like if I'm if I'm teaching, you know, 8 a.m. or let, let's let's say I'm teaching 2 p.m. Well, anyone in California, that's going to be three hours ahead, mm -hmm. you know, then. I'm teaching like maybe four or five students at one time in, in different time zones. If they're in mm -hmm. London, that's that's going to be a little bit uh, behind versus ahead. So mm -hmm. uh, you, you got all those factors, you know, uh, playing a role. And the reason that I kind of pulled back a little bit, I, I love the platform and I, I still maintain relationships with the students is because when it comes to promoting me, <laughs> 
I can't necessarily redirect from that platform. Mm, okay. I, I, I can direct to the platform, but not away from it. And that's mm. that that that's a conflict for me because I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Right, but, right. But I'm I'm thankful for those platforms though. Mm, okay, that's awesome. And so you've been you've been teaching people and doing the one-on-ones and also the group coaching, it seems like as well. Right. Going through that training as well, man. And, and dealing, dealing with people across the world. That's awesome yeah, that you yeah. even have an opportunity, a platform to be able to teach people these skills that you have, you know, through this channel. And people could be in England and in California at the same time learning from you. Right. In a total different area. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so technology is definitely awesome to be able to, uh, to be able to do things like that. You know, um, I, I know you also talked about, you know, that you do the production work as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And so with that, how long have you been doing the production work? And is it is it mainly focused on people that you have come in contact with through like the church environment, working with them or kind of how have you come across the clientele that you have uh, with the music production? A, a variety of ways, man. Um, yeah, mu music production is, is needed. Like if, if, we're, if we're thinking about the intro of a movie, you know, the first thing that we hear is a score, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't you don't hear uh, an orchestral an orchestral score. You might just hear a beat drop. You know what I'm saying? Like like think, think about Black Panther. You know, you have that Kendrick Ken, uh, Kendrick Lamar coming mm -hmm. in. You know what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. it comes in like a, a producer did that. A music producer did that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of background music. You hear background music on on phone calls when you're mm. waiting. You That's hear, true. You, That's you hear true. background music. Uh, not as much now, but on elevators, you used to hear hear that kind of in the same way you would in the phone. You hear it in uh, in stores. You hear it. Obviously, the more familiar way is if you purchase someone's uh, project. You hear it that way. Um, YouTube videos, commercials, it's like mm. everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The the main thing is to be good at it, first of all. Right, right. <laughs> and again, that's subjective because Relative, I've, right, yeah, right. I've heard not good stuff being the background music <laughs> 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 on call on phone calls. I'm like, y'all chose this. Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> so um but yeah, um, and I, I want to make sure I stick I stick with your question because I, I kind of veered off. What, what, no, no, what? it's cool. I mean, uh, uh, it, it's just because what I'm thinking about is just making me think like, if, it, again, musicians is just another type of entrepreneur. But it, it makes me think like you got to be proactive right. and you got to be creative like the creative are you podcast. Right. Like you right. got to think outside the box, because what you're basically saying is that there's so many opportunities out there. Right. It's like, how am I right taking advantage and connecting with the opportunities that are provided for me? There's millions of stores. There's stores who are just local in my community. There's stores in my community who want to pr promote themselves as the local store. Why right. are you a local store, but you're playing non-local music? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, let's let's make a let's collab together, right? What I don't know what you're paying. Uh, these people to play in in the store, but let's collab. We can even do some live programming. What I mean, you know, there's so much things that you could do that you right. just got to think outside the box. I'm not even thinking about scores of movies, but you're right. Somebody doing the scores of movie, and yeah. these movies is million dollar movies. So somebody million, probably get paid exactly. a lot of money to do the score for these movies, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's very it's very relationship heavy though. Like mm -hmm. you 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 got to be on it with your network, and like if you're not reaching out to these um uh music libraries that right. uh that facilitate that that help to uh curate the music for each movie or mm. sitcom or series you got to reach out through email and you got to be consistent and you have to you know do it at the right time like it can't you know it there, there there's a science to that and you develop a relationship with these places which i'm in the process of doing that but that's that's when residuals come in and play in mm. every publishing yeah when that yeah. <laughs> when that commercial when that commercial is run you produce that song once and every time mm. that commercial is run you're getting paid you know what i'm saying wow so, that's so a that's, whole different thing i ain't even yeah, think about either yeah. commercials yeah. and commercial yeah. music yeah and I'm, I'm i'm not i'm not being compensated for that yet but but i i have you know um i i do have a list of, of instrumental music that, that i that i lease out again i produced it once and then you know, I've had a couple of times, you know, I see this PayPal notification 
someone just <laughs> someone just purchased your track you know from right, right and I, right. That, that's a that's a pretty uh pretty good feeling and i i'll say it's sort of like this sometimes it is according to the trend mm -hmm. e even though i don't think i mean music is according to trend but it may be based on what's popular what kind of music is popular at that time mm -hmm. there there was a time when classical music that's just what it was. So these classical composers made a really like awesome living at mm -hmm. like, you know, relative to what the um the the dollar was worth at that time. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, they they were rich, they were wealthy, like because to compose a piece for uh, a 30 piece orchestra to play, mm -hmm. like you you had to know how to write it and direct it so it was mm -hmm. like that that was just a huge role All, almost similar to when when books graduated from scrolls like mm -hmm. you know when they right, were no, right, when, right. yeah when they were no longer scrolls and then books like actual pages right and start to, getting binded right yeah to to the person that wrote because books were originally handwritten mm -hmm. obvious, i mean that's like the obvious thing but they they were handwritten and they were page by page and not many people had books right they had, they had scrolls right so to have a to have a book written you got paid a pretty penny mm -hmm. to actually have that done and very few people had books in their house and then mm -hmm. that's when the printing press was uh invented and then that right sped it up and then that took away the the scribe position to actually write a book but um yeah man but yeah with with music it's really about getting tapped into yeah it's, it's very relationship heavy like who hmm. are you who are you in, in relationship with and are you consistent because it's not like this thing that you can just show up and and, hmm. and, and people just trust you you got to have some uh some staying power you have to you know be trusted and things like that you got to be good at it they, they got to like what you have basically and you got and they gotta know you you like you say yeah. right you can't just stay closed up all day you know not talking with anybody mm -hmm. i mean that's the thing we have to get outside of our box i think being comfortable is one of the quickest ways to kill something and to not allow something to grow yeah that's just the reality like, and, and, in order and, to grow you got to get uncomfortable and pe people are more willing to pay uh like again with the background music because i'm wondering how how did this whack background music Get on it. <laughs> well they're in relationship with that producer right and, and that producer shows up every time <laughs> and they're, they're they'll be more willing you know to work with that person that's reliable right it, it's right. not it's not the best but that's what i'm learning i'm like like the stuff that i got with top what they have in my opinion i mean look i but got I'm, some I'm not in relationship. Whack, i got some whack background music too <laughs> i mean saying they playing they playing the residual right i can right. give them some whack pecs on my my yeah. piano you know? hey man hey that's, <laughs> that, that's really what it but that 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 goes back to when i first started playing guitar i was not a good guitar player i was just mm. learning it but i showed up mm. and and they and nobody else was showing up mm. it, it's like and i thought i was pretty uh timid in front of people but it was like a directive like show up and that's that's where I learned that so I, I take that now to other areas in in podcasting and music production mm -hmm. people people got to see and know what you're doing that they have to know it and that that's that goes into promoting um I noticed that maybe my promotion my promoting hadn't been as strong so I need to be creative right mm -hmm. <laughs> and make sure that people know what I do and keep showing up and then therefore they'll they'll trust like pe people will invest in what they trust basically right you right know what I'm saying yeah right no that that makes perfect sense man and I always think about the YouTube guys making the beats and stuff like that like they figured out a way to expand like they're probably still working in general with normal artists like they normally do right, right saying I'm trying right. to produce for this person and making yeah. their money here but there's like you know the world is globalized now i could be selling beats to somebody in ukraine yeah. and nobody would never know about it but every time they buy my beat that's 50 dollars. that's 80 dollars, depending on the licensing it or if they buy the full rights to the song if they getting all right. the stems or if they only getting the full instrumental or if, right. you, know, you know like whatever the level it is that they pay but i'm like you know like you said right they could they're already making beats they could be creating 
80, 100 beats for the year. And hey, if they have 100 people pay for a beat each, that's the money they make it extra outside of what else they're already doing. You and if, and if and, and if they're leasing if they're leasing that track, it, that same track can go to five like multiple times. People. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. So, you know, yeah. That's that. That's that's what you call digital real estate. You know what I'm saying? Mm, like on, on I like, like that digital. Real estate. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's how that's that's how we're like terming it because it's just just like a physical property and in like an apartment. You know, you have. Hmm. several tenants over the course of maybe 10 years or you might have that that one tenant but you know if you if you keep somebody in there that's that's a recurrent expense um or like let's say you have a famous producer who may sell an exclusive track for fifty thousand, which hmm. does does happen for for one track <laughs> you know what i'm saying right that, that or twenty thousand, or let's let's say even ten thousand. right um for one track for for you to sell it to that particular artist outright but let's say you lease a track for fifty dollars a track but let's mm -hmm. say 300 people lease that same track mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you you still you're still in a position like the track still belongs to you and you haven't sold it exclusively mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it still it still belongs to you Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you're you're making a, a, a well based on each sale, you know what I'm saying, or each uh transaction that uh based on that particular uh track lease. So yeah. Now I, let me ask you a question. So when 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 you're talking about like the publishing, for example, when songs are played on because I know you talk about every time the commercial is played on a radio, right? This person who produced this music for this, they could get some revenue from each play, you know what I'm saying, when yeah. that commercial is played. So is that the same way that it works if, say, you produce the song for an artist and it's played or if the song is if they. So I guess I'm trying to understand how that residual pack part yeah. of it works and yeah. where, when is it residual? When is it not like when, if they played a song for the Super Bowl and I produced the song, but they were doing it live? Do right. I still get paid for them playing it at that time or versus if they just played the song at the Super Bowl? Hey, I know you've been watching this episode and I know you've been wondering, like, how can I impact the world as a biblical entrepreneur? Well, one way that you can impact the world as a biblical entrepreneur is to wear the uniform of biblical entrepreneurs. Right. Look, we have designs for both men and women so that they can actually wear what they are and what they are becoming. So if you are a biblical entrepreneur, visit www.lionelmosby.com. That's www.lionelmosby.com. So you can get the merch that proves that you are about impacting the world. Let's get back to the episode. So, so there, there, there are different ways that you can get paid with uh, through music that is played publicly. It is through a license that each venue there it, it's usually standard that like let's say a club um mm. or um the super bowl like there's uh something that's called mechanical royalties okay. but each each uh organization have to pay a fee for a blanket license so mm. what happens is they like whatever music they play the funds are distributed through that uh through that that blanket license to be like a portion of that is distributed to the artists of the music that they play or the creators of the music that they play the artist or the the musician has to enroll with an organization called a performance rights organization when when you sign up with that organization that pro um they locate the funds of where your music is being played because you mm -hmm. uh, you you upload your music with that platform and they then they track it they they will track your music of who's playing mm -hmm. your music and and that's it it's it's synced up that way so that you know who's playing it they know who's playing it and they're gathering the money they they take a small percentage of of what uh that's how they get paid you know so they're they're going to seek out who's playing your stuff and if they track it and they find it then you you get a quarterly payment for that particular um song or whatever being being paid the same the same thing with with movies and commercials mm -hmm. they they when, when you're signing up or doing the paperwork and there there are different arrangements sometimes there are exclusive payouts or there's like a uh, like an initial payment 
mm-hmm. on, on, on top of royalty. So there, there are different mm-hmm. uh, agreements. Gotcha. And that uh, that organization is affiliated with or in contact with the PRO or the Performance Rights Organization, and that's that's where the funds get funneled through hmm. to the artist. Hmm. Yeah. That's yes. very interesting. Okay. Yeah. So they th- those are the people who be all on my YouTube talking about you can't make no money from this video because they got a copyright claim on it. Those them people. So <laughs> everything, everything that everything that you just said. So if you're using somebody's music, let's let's say you're using a, a Jay-Z track or something like that. Uh-huh. They'll run an ad on your on your video. Um, but you're okay. not gonna get you're not gonna get the money. They're mm. they're getting the money. Yeah. That, so 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 because the song because I'm using this artist specific song on this video. So when they run an ad, whatever ad revenue would come in because of the video, since the song was on there, they're gonna give the ad revenue to the PRO, which is then gonna pass it down to the artist. Yes. Wow. So they would so that that they that would happen for everything. So what so say if it's a situation where it was licensed, right? Say it's like because you know you got like um what do you have out here like uh SoundCloud, Epidemic Music, all these other stuff, right? That people right. use for YouTube, right? Um so say it's like that situation, they got a license to use different music from the site. How right. does it work then? Is it a situation then where they still do get revenue, but then revenue is apportioned off to say the the content creator of the of the video itself then well that that, that in that, that situation that sort of depends like like let's say like i i had somebody um i think it was like last week they uh licensed a track from me okay because they're a little indecisive of what they wanted what they want to like lock in with music wise so they're like you know i i need something but you know it doesn't have to belong to me yet so I'm just going to license some music, you know, and not only can several people license that same track, different people can can license that same track, but that's that's just a yearly lease. Like so someone leased it for $30, okay? That's for the year. Next year they if they would they want it, that they want to still use it, they have to lease it again for another $30. But that's that's like once you lease it, you have you have permission to use it, right to it. Mhm whatever mm, so you lease it so then you so that ad revenue would come straight to you at that point but after that year at that point the pro would say hey 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 i'm tracking you and your, your lease is up so now the ad revenue will go back to the the to the origin of the person that produced the song well in in a in a leasing situation one once that person makes like say say for you say say you lease a track for me okay one, once you pay me for leasing my music mm-hmm. you've already paid me Okay. You, you 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 just put it on your video and that's it. So now here's the thing. If you if you get um if you get ads run on your video, mm-hmm. you will get those that the um the ad money from that. I've I've already been paid. Now of course there there's a way that I can set it up to where, you know, where my music is played, I could get additional, you know, like an additional portion from whatever ads are run on your um on your video mm-hmm. but there there's a way to set that up as well but as far as um as far as like somebody else being paid outside of that the people who are being, being paid is either you or me it, mm. and it, it pretty much stops there so but after that one year lease how would it work because we, i only leased it for a year right i leased it right. for 30 dollars for the year right. so after the year when they're still running the ads on this video then at that point in time then it, the, the ad revenue goes directly to you at that time well, you 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 just lease it. You could either lease it again, or mm-hmm. or I can um I can make sure that my music is uh, positioned to where the digital tracker like it, there, there's an agency that that does it. I I, I mentioned the performance right organization, mm-hmm. but the digital tracker for like YouTube it, that mainly does it online. Make sure that my music is um that digital file is registered with that agency. Mm-hmm. And and every time that is tracked, it it would operate that way to where whatever ads are run on, on your video, you will get a portion of that ad money, and I would get a portion of the ad money to where it would like come to me for you using my music for three seconds or whatever. 
Mm, okay, so that so then in that situation, that's all a part of that original lease agreement, though, that you have. So that it, that the, it's an understanding that the artist is getting a portion of ad revenue, the content creator gets a portion of ad revenue, that's and that's correct. how it goes all yeah. the way through. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I like that. I mean, I think that's <laughs> a I think that's a completely different route to go. I mean, for you, for for you. I'm gonna call you starving artists. You're not starving artists, though, right. right? You're just you just haven't yet tapped into the reality that there's so much abundance out there, right? I know y'all sure. are on YouTube. I know y'all see all these people. I know y'all could probably reach out to some of these people and say, "You got some. You got some red bars on your video because you got copyright claims." I know right. you do. I really do yeah. know you do. You know what I'm saying? Well, I actually create music, and I can license some music for you. You gonna get paid up front for whatever music you producing, right? Whatever y'all right. agreement is, then you also gonna be able to get some music rev. I mean, some ad revenue on the back end. Like that sounds awesome to me. Like yeah. I, I'm try- I need to finish learning how to play the piano, so I need to take <laughs> Kashif's one on one piano training course. Okay, so I can right. finish learning piano, so that I can pack my way into some background music. And pack my way into working with some of y'all on y'all YouTube stuff. Okay, that's what that's hey. what I feel. That's what I feel like right now. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I feel like doing. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. That, that's some great information though, because I feel like there's probably people who don't know anything about that. You know, from mm-hmm. not as just the musician side, but even the content creator side. Right of right. you know what? Now this gives their mind an opportunity to kind of think through some stuff and say, okay, there's some different opportunities of how I can explore. Doing some things because you guys are probably going to the same places a lot of other people going to when you got people all around you who make original pieces of music. That's right. Who you can act, you can have an intro that nobody else has, and they can never have it because you actually bought it out right, right? You know what I'm saying? You own it, right? You know what I mean? So that that's awesome, man. I'm gonna pay some bills here. I mean, it's been an awesome conversation we've had so far. Uh, I'm just gonna talk a a little bit about our sponsor uh, for for this day. But when we come back, man, I, I would just love for you to just close us out, just giving people some some tips, right? You know, there's some people who want to work with, for example, churches. You know, they they are you know biblical entrepreneurs who are in the mu- music field, right? You know, what I mean, they know how to play an instrument. They've been playing it for years. They play it well, right? And they would love to either tap into uh, the church community, or they're already involved in the church community, and they just don't know how to go about structuring an agreement with uh uh one of the churches that they're playing for can give you give some did them some tips right of how they can maybe go about that to actually now monetize their skills but also stay in an environment that they really want to stay in because they want right. to work they want to work with the church right they don't prefer to go and work in other areas they would actually love to stay uh among the people of god right and so right I want you to give us some tips on that, right? But before we do that, I want to just tell y'all about our sponsor for today. It's Tent Makers 101. Tent Makers 101, where Christian principles fuel business practices. You are a tent maker, and I know you're probably asking, are you one of those? Yes, you are. If you have a gift, if you have a talent, you have a product or service, any type of business that is seeking to follow in Jesus' footstep and meet the needs of the community so that you can impact them with the everlasting gospel, then guess what? You are a tent maker. And so we're meeting every day on Facebook with other entrepreneurs in order to foster growth, collaboration, and strategic partnerships for increasing your brand awareness and your revenue. We truly believe that every business is a ministry. When you accomplish God's purpose for you in the world in the form of products and services that provide true value to your particular audience, then guess what? You are truly successful. So don't wait. Join us on Facebook now at Tent Makers 101 biblical entrepreneurship so kashif the floor yes, is sir. yours man help help some of us to be able to connect with our with our church communities yeah yeah to be honest with you man like my 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 whole walk like just like uh, early on i started volunteering that's that's really that's like the that's that's the way now don't don't get me wrong my walk in volunteering has not always been like a smooth one I've had times where I've doubted. I've gone through the church hurt. Um, I've, I've gone through all of that. But my uh, my directions, what I feel like my directions were to be a part of, you know, this church were pretty solid. Like, I feel like I know where I'm supposed to be. 
Mm -hmm. And I also connect with um, the fact that either I'm going to complain about what this music ministry is doing or I'm going to be a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. So lots of people um, will leave a church because they're uh, disappointed about what they see happening at a church and they fail to, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not pointing things at any particular person, but some people don't look at themselves and ask themselves, how, how can I be a part of the solution instead mm -hmm. of just piecing out? And sometimes your directions are to go somewhere else because you're just supposed to be somewhere else. Um, so in my walk has been, okay, you're done with Tallahassee, Florida. You're no longer here. You're about to move to Atlanta. And so now I'm, I'm in, in the Atlanta area and it's like, okay, so where do I go? So now I'm starting to go to churches and praying along the way, like, where, where do I go? Like, where do I feel home? And I, I found my church. When I found my church, I got the same direction. Go, <laughs> go volunteer. I'm like, okay. So then I started volunteering for the youth ministries uh, band and volunteer there. I did that mm. for, for, for probably a couple of years, probably a little more than that. Um, and you know there there were some things that happened that were that was that was hurtful that I never really shared a whole shared with a whole lot of people. I made sure that I kept it personal between between me and God, and not that I worked it out. I'm good. Like I could talk about it. I don't I don't feel like I'm opening reopening a, a old wound or anything like that. Um, but basically, when it comes to a church environment, people have this this view on the church that the church people are perfect. And you got to mm. you got to totally separate that. You know what I'm saying? You are a part of a a body, and when the body mem the body of members are missing, it's going to be a malfunctioning, crippled body. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have that perspective that I'm going to be in place. If I know that I'm that I'm directed here, go and be in place. Mm. And I did that, and then in in time, that provision was was made, and it's been some probably seven or so years that that provision is being made and that provision was being made throughout the pandemic. Hmm. Um, so I know that is probably different for different churches because a lot of churches closed down during the pandemic. But True. I do feel that when you listen to what God is telling you to do and it's in line, you're going to be taken care of. Now, I'm mm. not saying I was balling out of control during the pandemic, you know, so, you know <laughs> it, there, there was, there were moments it's like, Oh goodness, you know what I'm saying? But we were, we were taken care of during that, you know? So that, that's, that's one way. Volunteering is you do that again, you're developing that relationship. People trust you. You may not be the best guitar player, but they trust you and you show up and, mm. and, and you're there to learn the music that we are ministering. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Not, not giving your opinion, man, we need to do this and listen, here's what we need for you to play. And I'm just one of those people I'm willing to play it and not, not, not argue. Um, right. The musicians that argue and not cooperating, they will get booted. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, we, we also have situations where, um, and this is other churches as well. If that musician can't show up, we need a fill in, you know, and, and usually uh, the music director or choir director will ask, OK, you can't be here. So is there someone that you know that that can fill in for you? So, again, relationships is it's mm. all relationships based. That's this is one thing. And I'm sure it's true in other industries where you're not going to look on online necessarily. You're not. It, it's word of mouth. Like, who do you know? Mm. You see what I'm saying? So. And that's really it. You just got to show up. You got to be there. You got to be consistent, you know, which goes hand in hand with anything else. Like, so when it comes to the YouTube platform, like in the, in the, the algorithm, mm -hmm. the algorithm kind of works the same way, even though it is a framework that was constructed, the algorithm wants to know, are you, are you still going to show up? You, you, right. you, you see, it's, it's the same thing that before you get ad revenue, like I, I haven't gotten any yet, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna just keep showing up. So it's it's gonna mm. it's the same process for me. Mm. Same process. Yeah. Mm. And if and if somebody is saying, you know, I'm looking to do 
this music full time. What are what are a couple of things they can look into right now as a way for them to to start bringing some revenue in? You know, as they're you know pr- maybe producing music on their own right now, right. seeking to produce for other people, but ways that they can actually monetize today. Yeah, that it's it's the same the same stuff I've been saying. You gotta you gotta show up. First of all, you gotta get you gotta get good at it. Now yeah. let's let's say let's say you're not good at it. Right. Let's just say you're not good at it. And how how would they know if they were good or not? That's even another question, right? Like, yeah. how do they test whether I'm good enough to be in such and such place or position? Yeah, so you yes. you are <laughs> you are open your 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 Apple Music or or your I mean people don't have iPods no more, <laughs> but like oh, oh, oh open your open your your. Alert, your, alert, 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 right. his age. <laughs> right, exactly. Don't, 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 uh, don't bring up the Walkmans. <laughs> the dog, this man, and then the iPod comes, and then. Uh, that is hilarious, yeah. Right. So, but yeah, like, o- open some sort of a list, a music player list that you have, and you, and you compare yours with theirs, like mm. a two-song playlist, and just compare them, like, compare them one after another, like, don't just you know, like compare them one after another. And really what you're looking for is uh, like volume. You make sure that the volume is right. You know, that because pe- people want the music to hit them a certain way. If they're playing one song and then your song comes up and, and it's quieter, like the music might be even nice, but if, if it's softer, they're likely, they don't want to have to turn it up because they might mm-hmm. already have it all the way up. So I mean, mm-hmm. that's what that's one factor. But you may want to uh, also point out just the different elements that is in that music in the music that's already like booming right now mm. or trending, picking out those different elements. So if it's like trap music, which is very popular, like surprising to me, but it is popular. <laughs> um, and to be honest, I think that it's popular because some of the rhythmic elements come from like a lot of African drum elements. Mm, okay, it, it, it is it's very attractive. So even though you might see somebody in African drums doing those elements, and I think it's coming through the drums and trap music. That's that's all another subject. But mm. if if you can mimic that and match the intensity and the dynamics of that, a lot of times if you can get the drums straight, people don't even care about the melody. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I'm and I'm just saying just as a starter, you know, with uh we're all evolving as musicians and stuff like that. And it, that's a never ending thing. Mm. Quincy Jones didn't have his first hit until he was 50. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So he, he was construct, he was a uh, composing orchestral and jazz music all, all throughout. All wow. the way up. You know what I'm saying? Then, then he runs into Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? So, mm. but yeah, so it just has to be something that you're called to do. It can't just be something that you're it's just a thing like it has to be in you because that's the only way you're going to stick with it. And right. um, and once you get that going and it's whatever, you might not get that going. You you have to uh, get on something like BeatStars.com or Airbit.com. Now, these are uh, beat makers, e-commerce uh, shopping cart. OK you know, websites where people can go to you, to your, uh, your, your account or mm. to your, your catalog and they can purchase or license that track. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And you, you just upload it like an attachment, like you do an email. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, as, as long as you do that, you put up some YouTube videos or put up some videos, you know, uh, showing you making the beat, your creative process, Mm. And people will That's be cool too. Yeah, intrigued by that. You stay consistent with that, and then people will be like, "Hey, I need some of that." You know, go go to Reddit or um, DistroKid to be engaged in the chats. Let let people know what you do. People have to know because there are so many people that have caught on to that. Right. It's like you know, it's it's just wild. Like so many people have caught. Wow. You know, that's you know cool. That's a that's a light. That's a nice couple things that people could do. You know, to make sure that they're quality right but then right. also to then put their quality up and make funds starting immediately it, it it really seems like the funds is in the the distribution aspect are are in the how would i say this right it seems like 
if you can be the middleman or if you can be the collector of mm-hmm. all the different things, because, you know, you said, OK, you can go to this place where you upload the music. Right. It's like for beat makers. Right. Well, if I'm the beat maker platform, you know, that's where it's at. You know, I'm that, just nah, thinking that, in my head. If I'm YouTube where everybody uploading their stuff, that's actually where it's at. Or, that's you, right. you, know, you know what I mean? So because you know. there, there's a fee for that. Like you 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 pay a, me- a membership fee to do that. And and you you can trust they they're making millions. Mm. And now there there's a a limit. Like they might say, OK, you can upload up to 10 beats for free and mm-hmm. you, you can have a free account like. But they might end up getting a five percent percentage from that, mm. from 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 each from each sale. But then, if if you get like a for real for real account, you can sell your beats with no percentage. Mm. And uh, you Smart. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like it that that's that's how it works. So so that's so that's just like being an agent, right? Being, right? Right? Being an agent, and let's say the seller's agent gets like ten percent of the price of a. Of a house that sold for two hundred thousand dollars, well, the agent might get five, ten, well, whatever their fee is, they just get a percentage. You know, mm, that's just, really that's yeah. cool. You yeah. know that I, I think that you know people who are in the creative and the art field also have to think about those aspects of things too. And a lot of times we're so creative that we're not thinking of thinking business. You know what I'm saying? And so I yeah, think that's if, me. right. You know, <laughs> if that's the one thing that I would say, you know. Because, you know, there would be somebody who's just a regular businessman who would come along and just say, hmm, you know, maybe I should just create a platform for you guys. Right now, right. somebody who is really not even creative, you know, the, the platform could be bulky and all that in the first place. Right. You know, platform ain't even creative, but the platform does exactly what you needed to do. Right. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. Because, right. you know, so there's there's really a lot of opportunities that's out there if we really would just stop and just think and consider. And so I hope, you know, this has been an interview that's, you know, given a lot of people out there who are especially in this genre and these fields or if you're in another field of entrepreneurship, because like we were saying earlier, everybody's creative. Everybody's been created by God, has a gift of talent. And these things, these principles that we're talking about as an artist, as a musician, right, does not just affect artists and musicians. They affect any other entrepreneur in any other field as well. And so you can take those same principles to your arena. There's opportunities there that you're just not thinking about, right, or looking into. And so, man, I want to thank you, Kashif, for coming on and just sharing with the Lion and Lambo podcast. Let everybody know, man, how can you be reached? How can you be accessed? Because some people are saying right now, like I'm saying, hey, that one-on-one sounds great. Or they're saying like, hey, you you produce. I do kind of need a podcast intro title, right? Like, so how can people get in contact with you um, if they want to connect? Well, cool, cool. I, I appreciate that. Uh, you spell my name. The correct spelling of my name is K E S H E A F. That's the correct spelling of my name. So there's kashifmusic.com. That's just straight. You know, my, you spell my name, add music to it, and nothing in, in between. Uh, kashifmusic.com. Uh, that's that's one place. Uh, as far as Instagram, there's uh, K Strings at K Strings. So that's K uh, S T R Y N G Z. That's uh, for Instagram and Creative R U uh, at Creative R U for Instagram. Yeah, those those are the uh, the places to reach me at. And any other link that needs to be accessed is pretty much um, they pretty much go from there. And you you can just you know toggle through those. And you can uh, listen to my catalog. You can take advantage of my twenty four seven music uh, live stream. You, I mean, mm. all, all the all the stuff. So yeah, man, that's awesome. So if you guys want to get in contact with Mister Kashif Kennedy himself, the host of the Creative Are You podcast, then definitely you know you can do that through those links and those channels. Um, definitely, all of it will be in the description. And of course, whether you're listening on Apple. Spotify, Amazon, Music, Buzzsprout, it doesn't matter. Um, watch it on YouTube. It's going to be there in the description. So you can just, just be able to click on those links and follow it there. And like you said, all the information will be in the bio. So if you guys want to hit him up to maybe talk and discuss about a one on one session, if you want to talk about his music production um, and what he could do and offer for you. Um, and what you are doing as an entrepreneur in whatever your field is, right? Because you may be looking to run some ads on Facebook or YouTube, 
And, you know, hey, you need to have some music that's licensed or that is exclusive your own, too, for that as well. That's not something you just need to grab something randomly off online and right. use it. Hey, calm down, right, before you get yourself in trouble. <laughs> so, you know, talk to Kashif if you got questions about music production or where it's needed in your business, your field, and the things you're trying to do. That's what he's here for, and I know he'll be able to help you and walk you along that rock pop right so i just want to thank all of you again for joining us on the line and lambo podcast uh, we're seeking to just talk about biblical entrepreneurship true impact and true success so that we can help all of us right to scale up to take our gift our, our skill our talent right our product our service and to use it to impact the world so we're done go impact somebody today Have yes a good sir. Day.